The Hallmark Channel is known for churning out more Christmas products than even the North Pole. That makes it a lucrative new home for plenty of stars who used to be famous for more mainstream shows and movies. Keep watching to find out who they are. If you were alive in the 90s, you surely remember Lori Loughlin as Aunt Becky on Full House. She ultimately found her forever home in 2010 on the Hallmark Channel. Her most reliable cash cow on the network has been the role of Abigail Stanton on the Western series When Calls the Heart, which started airing in 2014. But the party was interrupted in 2019, when Lachlan and her husband, Massimo Giannulli, were implicated in the Operation Varsity Blues college admission scandal. They allegedly paid scam orchestrator Rick Singer $500,000 to get their daughters into the school of their choice. After striking a plea deal, Lachlan and Giannulli both paid fines and served some time behind bars. As for When Calls the Heart, it hasn't been the same since the beloved Abigail was written off, but there may be hope yet for Lachlan. Show creator Brian Bird told From the Desk in 2019, Hope Valley will always be a place of second chances. Furthermore, Lachlan's legal woes didn't hurt her bottom line too much, as Variety reported that she downsized to a Hidden Hills, California mansion worth $9.5 million in August 2020. Lacey Chabert and Hallmark movies go together like burnt gingerbread men and spiked eggnog. There simply could not be a more harmonious union. After gaining fame in the likes of Party of Five and Mean Girls, her Hallmark journey began in 2010 when she signed on to play Liberty Taylor in Elevator Girl. She's really made a home for herself on the family-friendly network, ultimately clocking in with more than 20 Crown Media productions. That's so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Apparently, the holiday spirit really sends Chabert into a frenzy of Hallmark-induced holly jollies as she confessed to Southern Living in 2019. I genuinely love Christmas, and anyone who knows me knows that I'm pretty Christmas-obsessed. I like to draw it out as long as possible, so it makes sense that I would enjoy making these movies. Chabert's bank account must love Christmas, too, as she boasts an estimated $4 million net worth. Tamara Mori Housley is living her dream life atop a Napa Valley vineyard, in a house that contains a pool terrace, an outdoor pizza oven, and a 400-bottle wine cellar. The real co-host first rose to fame alongside her twin sister Tia in the 90s sitcom Sister Sister. In 2012, she made her way to the Hallmark scene as Daphne in Christmas Angel, and she arrived not a moment too soon. While we love how Hallmark exudes sunny optimism, the brand is usually as white and blonde as a skinny vanilla latte. Maury Housley is grateful for the opportunity she's had to bring diversity to Hallmark, as she told Oprah Daily in 2020. It's different when you're seeing someone on the screen and they actually look like you and they're achieving what you want to achieve. You feel inspired. You feel like if she can do it, I can do it. The actress was even given free reign from Hallmark to get behind the 2020 film Christmas Comes Twice as a producer. As she noted to Oprah Daily, when you have a dream of playing a certain role or wanting a film to tell a certain story, it's amazing. It's on a whole other level when you are creatively in control of that. I'm absolutely in love with this film. You could say that every time Candace Cameron Bure makes a Hallmark movie, an angel falls in love with a small-town fellow named Chad. She's basically a walking billboard for child stars who came out on top. In the late 80s and early 90s, she starred on Full House as DJ Tanner, everyone's favorite All-American eldest sister, and she reprised the role a couple of decades later for the Netflix sequel series Fuller House. She stashed away an estimated $14 million, so she's clearly at the top of her money-making game. In between the Tanner family saga, Cameron Bure found her niche as a Hallmark queen, with dozens of credits to her name, including multiple Christmas entries. And don't get it twisted, as she doesn't consider her Hallmark success anything but hard-earned. During an appearance on the Paula Ferris podcast, she got into that topic, as she said, can we just talk about this for a second? I get that all the time. How hard is it to be in a Hallmark movie? Like, can I be in a Hallmark movie? And I'm like, are you a professional actor? No? Then no, you cannot. You can be a background person. They're called extras. These haters have clearly got Cameron Bure shouting, oh my lanta. 
Holly Robinson Pete first started turning heads in 1987 opposite Johnny Depp as Officer Judy Hoffs on 21 Jump Street. She then went on to shine in the likes of Hanging with Mr. Cooper and Mike and Molly. She eventually made her way over to the Hallmark Channel, starring in such films as A Family Christmas Gift and The Christmas Doctor, the latter of which required some steamy scenes with her co-star Adrian Holmes. Making bank while making out with a hot co-star sounds great, but there's a bit of a hitch, at least during a pandemic. During an interview with Today, Robinson Pete talked about COVID-19 kissing safety procedures, explaining that she was able to maintain her health, but not the romance. As she put it, you have to just drink all these concoctions and gargle for a certain amount of time. Then each of us have our spit buckets, so that's really romantic. I used to think that kissing on TV and movies was not romantic, but they've taken it to another <laughs> level of, of uncomfortable and awkward. While that may sound a bit gross, you surely won't spit at Robinson Pete's estimated net worth of $4 million, which she's used to indulge on traveling around the world with her family to places like Vietnam, Cambodia, South Africa, and Indonesia. Danica McKellar warmed the hearts of American families everywhere as Girl Next Door Winnie Cooper on the classic coming-of-age dramedy The Wonder Years. She's continued to thrive in Hollywood since then, eventually landing in the Hallmark universe. She talked about her experience with the Wholesome Network during a 2018 appearance on Today, as she gushed. They are just so good-natured, they tell good stories about good people, and yes, they provide an escape from our crazy world, but more than that, they remind us that we can be better, and they remind us to connect with each other. And they remind us of the importance of family and traditions, and I just love helping to spread that in the world." If you only know McKellar from her acting career, you might not realize that she's also been living a double life as a math whiz. In 1998, she earned herself a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics from UCLA, and she even contributed to a scientific theorem with one of her professors and a fellow student. McKellar has also penned eight math books with titles like Kiss My Math and Math Doesn't Suck. Altogether, she's multiplied her own paper to an estimated net worth of $6 million. Clearly, math leads finish first. Jesse Metcalf has shown off his talent in a variety of fields, and he's got the payoff to prove it, as he's worth an estimated $12 million. You might have first met him as Naughty Gardener John Rowland on Desperate Housewives. He then melted more age-appropriate hearts in his big-screen debut, 2006's John Tucker Must Die. From that point forward, he went on to star in several other movies that Netflix has probably recommended to you 500 times, before finally crossing over to Hallmark territory. In 2020's A Beautiful Place to Die, A Martha's Vineyard Mystery, Metcalf gets pretty physical in some fight scenes, which he was able to handle, as he's aged like a fine wine into his 40s. As it turns out, he's been training as a martial artist for years, which has conveniently contributed positively to his acting career. I try to do as many of my own stunts as possible, I know it's you know, for you. because I, I feel as though you can tell when it's a stunt double. Metcalf was especially proud of A Beautiful Place to Die, as he also signed on as a producer, which allowed him to be really hands on creatively. After Full House ended its eight-season run in 1995, Jodie Sweetin didn't know what to do with her afternoons. She unfortunately turned to some toxic vices, including alcohol, heroin, ecstasy, and cocaine. As she revealed in her memoir, Unsweetened, she began drinking as a young teenager, which led to her going in and out of 12-step programs and rehab during her late teens and 20s, as she fought her drug and alcohol abuse. Sweeten ultimately turned things around as she got clean, had a couple of kids, and fell into the open arms of the Hallmark Channel, which has helped her get back to loving life and goofing off on set. As she told Complex in 2016, I am just now able to enjoy the person I am, faults and all. I can laugh at the darkest, sort of most upsetting times in my life. There's plenty for Sweeten to be laughing and smiling about nowadays. She boasts an estimated $2 million in the bank. And in 2018, she shared an Instagram snap of the new Mercedes-Benz she scooped up, as she declared, I haven't had a new car in about 17 years, so this was a big deal. After several years of working my ass off, it was time. Who can forget Rachel Lee Cook as lovable art nerd Lainey Boggs, getting whisked off her easel by suave jock Zachary Siles in the 1999 high school flick She's All That? 
the plot may have been predictable, but it still had all the ingredients of a warm and fuzzy rom-com, which has always been important to cook. She's set to return for the gender-swapped remake He's All That, but she's already found a true home at lovey-dovey Hallmark. As she told Collider in 2020, "...the Hallmark Channel have been incredible partners to me and so supportive, and I love working in the feel-good space, you know? I spent many years trying to be cool and make edgy content that I thought would make people sort of stand up and take notice of me, but it wasn't until I sort of followed my heart's desire and my true intention that I think I started really to feel like I had greater control, or a degree of say-so over the way my projects were gonna go." Another benefit to working with Hallmark that Cook appreciates is the ability to make a movie in a short time span, as she's completed multiple movies in just 15 days. The hustle has paid off handsomely for her, as she listed her stunning Studio City home for $4.295 million in September 2020. Clark Kent, Superman, Hallmark hero, Dean Cain can do it all. But the path he ended up taking wasn't exactly how he planned it. After graduating from Princeton University in 1988, he briefly joined the roster of the NFL's Buffalo Bills. But fate had other ideas, as a knee injury ended his athletic career prematurely. In 2012, he told Coffee Talk, "...I enjoy acting. I never knew that I was going to be an actor for certain. I thought about it when I was in college. I was like, you know, that's what I'm gonna do after I finish playing pro football." Well, I played pro football for about a half an hour. Then I got injured and that was the end, so, you know, you're constantly changing. So Kane turned his sights to Hollywood and put his pretty face to work on a variety of shows and movies. It all eventually led him to the land of Hallmark, which has contributed to his heroic estimated $6 million net worth. As he told Coffee Talk, "...I'm very happy where life has brought me thus far. We'll see where it goes from here. We're guessing more Hallmark." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.